Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Quill and I'm an assistant professor of endocrine surgery here at Columbia University in New York. I'm also one of the 2020 American Thyroid Association Research Grant awardees. And the title of my project is Clinical Outcomes of Radiofrequency Ablation of Thyroid Nodules in the United States. Thyroid nodules are quite prevalent, affecting 65% of our population. Both benign as well as cancerous thyroid nodules contribute to an estimated 130,000 thyroid operations performed each year. Although generally considered a low risk operation and associated with good outcomes, patients who undergo thyroidectomy can put, uh, report some potential side effects. And these include some neck tenderness, voice problems, even if temporary, swallowing difficulties, an irritated windpipe. Some less common but more concerning complications include hematoma, decreased parathyroid hormone activity, as well as nerve injury. In addition, even if patients choose to undergo removal of only half of their thyroid gland, an operation called thyroid lobectomy, 25 to 30% of these patients will require thyroid hormone supplementation at some point in their lifetime. Due to these side effects, patients have often looked for an alternative approach for treatment of their thyroid nodules. In 2002, ultrasound-guided radiofrequency ablation of thyroid nodules was introduced in Asia as a potential alternative approach for the treatment of thyroid nodules and has quickly gained popularity as a treatment option worldwide. RFA involves the introduction of an electrode into the thyroid nodule using ultrasound guidance. The electrode has a tip that emits radio frequency waves that allows for burning of tissue surrounding that tip in a very targeted fashion. Thyroid nodules that undergo RFA ablation will shrink in size as the body reabsorbs the ablated tissue. The advantages of RFA includes the fact that it can be performed as an outpatient pr procedure without the assistance of general anesthesia. It's less invasive and associated with a shorter recovery time, and there's no surgical scar. When you look at the countries with an extensive experience of radiofrequency ablation of thyroid nodules, you'll find that there's limited experience here in the United States. This is due to the FDA's very slow but cautious, appropriately cautious, adoption of new technologies. However, RFA has made its way to the United States and the Mayo Clinic published their first series of 14 patients in 2018. Thus, the objective of my study is to rigorously evaluate the clinical outcomes of RFA of thyroid nodules here in the United States. In order to do so, we will concentrate on three different patient populations. The first will analyze patients with benign solid thyroid nodules, the second, patients with papillary microcarcinoma or papillary thyroid cancers less than 1.5 centimeters in size. And the third group of patients will be patients with indeterminate thyroid nodules, specifically Bethesda classification three, that have been molecularly profiled and classified benign. In the first arm of the study, we'll evaluate patients with benign solid nodules that have chosen to undergo radiofrequency ablation for treatment of their nodule. We'll compare this group of patients to those that have opted for surgical reception of their thyroid nodule. The outcome of interest in this particular arm of the study will be differences in quality of life measures. In the second arm of the study, we will evaluate patients with papillary microcarcinomas that undergo radiofrequency ablation and compare this group of patients to those that elect to undergo active surveillance of their small cancers. In this study, we will evaluate the clinical outcomes between these two groups of patients. In the third arm of the study, we will evaluate patients with Bethesda 3 nodules that have been classified as benign. We will compare patients that choose to undergo RFA for treatment compared to those that choose either surgery or active surveillance for treatment. In this arm as well, we will be concentrating and analyzing the clinical outcome differences between these three groups of patients. I would like to sincerely thank the Thyroid Cancer Survivors Association for their generous donations that have enabled these research grants. I would also like to 
sincerely thank the American Thyroid Association for allowing me to contribute to this important mission of optimizing the care of our patients with thyroid nodules and thyroid cancer. Finally, I would like to thank my fabulous team here at Columbia University for their ongoing support of our important work.